Good morning and welcome to WTVA for today's lessons from the New Albany School District. My name is Luke Tintoni and I have the pleasure of being the assistant principal at New Albany High School. Today you're going to see three different segments. Our first segment comes from Miss Betsy Wages, who's a first grade teacher at New Albany Elementary School. The next segment will be by Coach Susie Bowman, who is our career coach at New Albany High School. And then the final segment, you'll see a, a short video uh, that addresses our Impacto program at New Albany High School. Thanks for being with us today, and we hope you enjoy our lessons. Hi, my name is Betsy Wages, and I'm a first grade teacher at New Albany Elementary School. I'm hoping that today I can help you with some of your instructional needs on as you learn from home. So I've been a first grade teacher for three years, and something that I frequently um, get asked by parents is how can I help my child become a better reader? Well, at New Albany Elementary, we use um, five components to help students learn how to read. We use phonemic awareness, phonics, reading comprehension, vocabulary, and fluency. Those are the building blocks of reading. And so today, I hope to teach y'all um, using one of those components, which is phonics. So today, we're going to be focusing on one certain skill, but parents, I just wanted y'all to know that even though I'm going to focus on one certain phonics skill today, you can use any phonics skill at home. It might be one that um, your class is working on currently from your teacher, or it could be a skill that you just noticed your kids are struggling with at home. So today, we're going to be working on the long and short vowel sound. This is something that I've noticed that first graders struggle with, especially coming from kindergarten into first grade. And as they're reading, they're unable to identify the different vowel sounds that they see as they're reading maybe in a passage or in a book. So today I'm going to focus on that. Okay, so um, one of the first things um, we're going to do is I'm going to let um, you guys see, and if your student's watching at home, I want y'all to look along with me. I've got a set of vowel cards that we're going to focus on today, okay? So with these vowel cards, I'm going to hold them up to make sure we know what our vowels are. So y'all just say them along with me as you see them. A, E, I, O, and U. Those are our vowels, and we'll be focusing on those as we do a game in just a little bit, okay? So the next thing I think you need to know is the difference between short vowels and long vowels, because that's the tricky part of it. Today, we're going to be doing a phonic scavenger hunt with short vowels and long vowels. Let me teach you what a short vowel is. So a short vowel is a vowel that says a short sound. So it would be a sound like a, ah, or e, eh, or i. Eh or ah, uh, or uh. And then our long vowel are vowels that say their name, like we would say when we're saying the alphabet. So it might be like A, E, I, O, and U. Now, part of our game today we're gonna to be working on is a phonic scavenger hunt. One of the things that I've made, I just used some paper that I had from home, and maybe you have some paper lying around the house too. Um, I made a little T-chart on that I'm gonna document all the things that I find on my scavenger hunt to identify different short and long vowel sounds. So you can use any paper that you've got at home or anything to write with. Notice at the top of my T-chart, I wrote short vowel, and I wrote long vowel. Also, for younger learners, it might be a good idea to draw a little picture. So students, you could draw a picture at the top to remind you what those vowel sounds make. So short vowel, I drew a picture of a cat because in cat, the A says ah. I drew on long vowel side a snake because the snake would say A, its name, like a long vowel would say, okay? So this is just an idea. We call it a T-chart because it organizes our thoughts into two different sides. So this will really help us. And students, you're probably familiar with this. You've probably seen this in class before, okay? So um, this is something great that we're able to use and organize our thoughts. Okay, so um, we'll have that today. Another way you can use your T-chart too is if you have chalk lying around your house, you can go outside and do a T-chart on the ground, okay? And organize it between short vowel and long vowel as you're doing your scavenger hunt. Now, today when we do it, the good part is you don't need much to do this scavenger hunt. It's very little prep and very little supplies for this, okay? So like I just showed you, if you want to make a T-chart, you can use this. If you don't have these supplies, you can just simply organize on the things you find in your scavenger hunt into two different um, piles is what you can do, a short vowel side and a long vowel side. So either way works, okay? For younger learners, parents, you might want to go ahead and have a word 
word list for those um, young learners that have short vowel and long vowel words. And what they can do is you can call out one of the words and have your child go and find that object, either around the house or outside, and they'll really enjoy doing that. When they bring the object back to you, you can have them, if you have a T-chart made for them, or if they make their own T-chart, you can have the students, the younger learners, write the vowel sound that they hear. So they can write it in the column, either short vowel or long vowel. They could even draw a picture if they'd like. Now for older learners, I would suggest that um, you um, let them go and find their own short vowel and long vowel objects, either around the house or outside, and I think they'll really enjoy doing that. When they come back to you and they organize them into the right columns, either short vowel or long vowel, I would have them write those words and practice those phonic skills that we're talking about, and that would be a really good practice for them. So those are my suggestions. The reason I love those two activities so much is because it covers so many skills. You've got movement and activity, You've got identifying objects. You've got identifying the vowel sounds. You've got sorting words into categories. You've got, if you have them writing, you're working on fine motor skills. So there's so many things that that covers that's um, just awesome for kids. And it'll get them really active and moving, which is great too. So today, I thought that we would do a few of these activities together just to kind of show you what it would be like whenever you do it, okay? So um, I have a few objects today that I've found in nature. Maybe if you're sitting right now um, in front of your TV, you might have a window in the room and you can kind of have a scavenger hunt looking with your eyes out the window with me right now and maybe later on you can make your own scavenger hunt okay so a few of the objects that I have picked out of nature let's see if y'all know what these objects are the first one I have this is called a twig say the word for me twig excellent now let's think do we think the word twig has a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound twig twig that's right, it's got a short vowel sound, excellent. So um, we can identify it as short vowel because the I says it. that's great. Now what you can do next is if you're an older student, you can write the word twig on your paper. If you're a younger student, you could just write an I that says it. excellent. Now what I love about phonics is even though we're focusing on the short and long vowel sound, if you're an older student and you're struggling writing the word twig, one of the things I spot at the beginning of twig is something called a blend, okay? The sounds say twa, twa. We call that a blend because we hear both letter sounds and we quickly blend it together when we write. So in this word twig, we hear a blend, then we hear a short vowel sound, and then another consonant afterwards, okay? So um, that's neat because you can throw in other phonics, uh, other phonics skills in there too, okay? Let's take a look at another object I have found on my scavenger hunt in nature. Let's see if y'all see it out your window. As y'all probably know, this is a leaf. Excellent. So a leaf, as you probably see out your window, listen to the word leaf. Do you think that has a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound in leaf? Very good. It's going to have a long vowel sound because we hear the E sound. Now, if you're writing the word leaf down, listen very carefully, l-e-f, leaf. Now, in the middle of the word leaf, you're gonna have something called a vowel team. When two vowels go walking, the first one's gonna do the talking. So, in the word leaf, we've got a vowel team. So, go ahead and write that word leaf if you've got your paper out, okay? So, um, we've learned vowel teams too. So, first in twig, we talked about blends. Now, we've learned about a vowel team. Excellent, guys. Now, my last object I found in nature, and maybe you can spot it out your window, is a pine cone. Say it for me. Pine cone. Excellent. So, with this pine cone, I want you to listen for me. Pine cone. Do you notice anything about that word? It's got two syllables, that's right. So let's listen to the first syllable, pine. Listen to that word pine. Hmm, do we think it has a short or a long vowel sound in pine? Pine. That's right, we hear the long vowel sound, we hear the I say in its name. Now let's think about the word cone. Cone, what do you notice about the word cone? That's right, it also says its name. So pine cone, both words in that word 
are um, going to be a long vowel sound. Another thing we would also say about the word pine cone is that that is a compound word. So compound words are two words we put together to make one word. So we could add that word pine cone to our long vowel side and we also just learned that some words have two syllables and this word is called a compound word. So great job, guys. Also, I have these cards just to show you what's making them say their name. In the word pine, the E makes the I say its name. We call that a magic E. And in cone, the E makes the O say its name at the end. We call it a magic E. Sometimes I call it a sneaky E because we can't hear it. But it's pretty bossy. It's making the vowel say its name, okay? so. I love that activity because we focused on long vowel and short vowel, but really so many other skills are in phonics that we can learn about, right? We learned magic key. We talked about vowel teams. We talked about blends. We talked about compound words. So, so many skills can come out of one activity and you can change it to make it into your own type of um, activity, whatever phonics skill works best for you. So what I do is I encourage you to go and I encourage you to go out and make your own on scavenger hunt now using your phonics skills. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Susie Bowman. I'm one of the Create Foundation career coaches and my school is New Albany High School. Um, today I wanted to work with you a little bit on resume building tips. I also get to work with the Impacto interns here at New Albany High School. It's an internship program um, that allows the student to participate in a college and career readiness class. Um, and then participate in a 100-hour internship in the summer between their junior and senior year. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some resume building tips. Um, right now students may be applying for scholarships. They also may be entering the workforce um, after graduation. We also may have some people in our viewing area who are entering the workforce um, following layoffs or furloughs. And so I hope these resume building tips will help you. So I want to start out with, um, with what I feel is, is very important right off the bat, essential skills. Every single employer is looking for these essential skills, and I want you to know what those are. They say the top seven essential skills that employers are looking for is um, the ability to communicate, um, the ability to be very dependable, to have teamwork skills, organizational skills, adaptability skills, leadership skills, and in our evolving world, I believe one of the most important is to be is to have technology literacy. Um, so a lot of time my students will say, what are my skills, Miss Susie? And I'll, I'll have to say, well, we have to figure that out. So how we're going to do that is to create a skills list. So it's one of the first things that um, that I will have the kids in my intern class do. Um, once we do that, we really want to start building our resume with those with those skills that we hone. So in order to do that, we want to make those skills pop on our resume um, with, with some creative wording. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, then I want to talk to you today about how to tailor your skills to the job that you're applying for. So our resume building tips I want to share with you today is the first thing I think you should do is know what your employer is looking for. You want to research the company. You want to know what your employer wants of you in this position, and that will help you build your resume. Um, and then I wanted to talk to you again about tailoring your skills to the job, and I want to show you an example of that here. Here, Eric Wilson is applying for a medical assistant position, and he's going to share his skill set on his resume by being very specific to that position. So he is going to say that he has skills in case management. He um, can work with cardiac monitors. He can complete insurance forms and electronic health records. So this is very specific to that position that he is applying for. Um, some more tips to remember. Um, do not include every little, little detail. So I tell my students this sometimes. Um, you want to keep your resume from exceeding one page. Um, so take out those little details. They may not care that you worked at McDonald's 15 years ago. Take that out of your resume um, and that will shorten it. Um, also, very important, watch for all spelling and grammatical errors. Hiring managers and recruiters want to see a well-organized, easy-to-read document that is free of spelling and grammatical errors. Um, they say that employers will take about six seconds and skim over your resume right off the bat. And then if they see those type of errors in your, in your resume, they will put you in the discard pile. So that is very important. Um, and then clean up your work history. 
So list jobs that, um, in a way that draws attention to your pertinent skills. Um, again, you know, don't include things that you may have done way past in your, in your work experience. Include those, those jobs that you know are going to shine your skills. And so I have a few examples here. Um, a student example of a resume is one that may help you to um, apply for a scholarship or to maybe apply for a college. Um, so one here that I, that I liked was this summary statement, this student is really selling himself. He is really introducing himself to, um, to this committee maybe if he is applying for a scholarship and he's taking his summary of skills and making it education based. So he said that he helped with group tutoring. With he was a student motivator, a strong collaborator. So great skill sets here to apply for scholarships or for college. Another example, um, we may have some teachers who may be applying to new school districts or to a new area within their district. When they do their um, resumes, they want to include their work history based in education. So again, don't go back and put that you babysat in your junior year of high school. While that's important, it's not important for the job that you're applying for. So you can see that here on this, on this resume example of a teacher. She included um, her teacher assistant experience and then what school districts that she had worked in. Another example, um, we all hope our restaurants open back up soon. So we may have some, some students go and apply for summer jobs, maybe as a hostess. So here was an example of one, Melissa Smith is applying for a hostess position or a waitress position. So she shines her skill set in hospitality, customer service, um, table setting, dining room management. So she really shined her skill set according to that position that she is applying for. So again, some, some reminders. Um, there's lots of resume templates out there. I always encourage my students to go to Google Docs because they have free resume templates and then you can just input your information and they don't charge you anything, it's free. Um, there are some great res uh, resume services that will help you build your resume and then charge you a fee to print it or to, to own that resume. Um, again, I just cannot reiterate enough, check your spelling. It's the, one of the most important things um, that an employer will look at when they're skimming over your resume. And keep it to one page. You, your employers are busy, so they don't have time to like kind of skim through five pages of your life history. They want to know the good stuff, and that's what you want to pop out on that one page of resumes. So that, those are my tips um, from the, your career coach at New Albany High School. What's up guys, it's Caleb Bader. I'm a senior at New Albany High School and I just finished my Pacto internship with Jay Morris Realty. <laughs>
We've got businesses wanting to employ them right now while they're still stu students in New Albany High School. The Impact of Internship is, is funded in so many ways by various partners that we have, and we are so thankful for those partnerships with Three Rivers Planning and Development um, District. We also have our Toyota Wellsprings Education Fund and the CREATE Foundation. It was fun having an intern. You know, it's like most people don't really know what we do in the real estate business. So having him here and having some indications that he was interested in the business, I think that he learned some things that maybe he wouldn't have thought of otherwise just by having run through the motions with us on some of our uh, daily activities, you know. A lot of people feel like the younger generation uh, that you know, the kids are lazy or not hardworking, but um, I didn't find this to be true with Caleb at all. Um, you know, it was, I think sometimes he came in was on his Christmas break because um, I know I was in and out a lot and he was always, um, you know, hard at work at different tasks. Caleb having been in di digital media at school uh, helped him. It kind of gave us something to uh, focus on and uh, it's a big part of our business that we do pictures for all the properties and try to present them well. And so, you know, him having exposure and experience with videoing and photos he, that's what he's working on even today still, but also throughout the program. He's, you know, it's kind of been part of what he did when I was doing a listing. He would go in with me and while I was getting paperwork signed and whatnot, and he took pictures around and we'd ask, you know, there were certain things we had to get answered as far as the forms and whatnot we were doing. He helped me get the answers to that. Anytime um, I saw Caleb, he was always hard at work at whatever task, you know, Jed or Miss Merle gave him for that day. So. The Impacto internship program, from just a parent standpoint and a professional standpoint, I just feel like that's one of the best things that the high school could offer their students. Um, there's just really nothing better than hands-on experience. You know, it was my junior year of high school, I'm still trying to figure things out, and I just wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. And I just saw everybody else going through the Impacto program, and they just had amazing testimonies about it, saying just great things. and. You know, it kind of sparked my interest, and then I saw Jay Morris, and then my, my interest in real estate started popping up. I decided I went to Ms. Bowman one day, and I just asked her if I could do an internship, just trying to, you know, put my foot in the water, just see what's going on, and she, she got me an internship, and it just turned out great. I'm always excited, excited when students uh, come and pursue me for the internship opportunities instead of me having to pursue them, and Caleb was one of those. Um, he came to me and said um, that he was really interested in a career in real estate, and so we knew a perfect partner uh, for him would be Jay Morris Realty, um, Mr. Jed Morris and Jamie Clayton. The Impacto program, I think, is a very good thing for our community and for the students, for sure. Uh, who hopefully will be a bigger part of our community as time goes on. The, uh, the program is something that when Caleb came into our, our office here, I, I think that he had some aspirations for the real estate business. And once he got in here, I hope that he leaves feeling more inspired to do that. As he came in, he was energetic and he just kind of kept that energy going while he was working on some of these things and learning. There were things that he had questions about or maybe didn't understand fully, but he was very attentive and he ultimately helped us get a lot of things done to improve our business. I had, a, I had an idea that I wanted to uh, go into real estate. I really enjoyed just looking at houses and uh, I think this kind of solidified that this is what I want to pursue in my career with, with just everything that they showed me behind the scenes, more like, you know, there's more that goes into it than you see. It was so much different every day. It was never the same thing. It just showed me that I really love this because like, every day I just came in, I was just, it was like it was like a, a, a switch just cut on that this is what I love doing. So like every day I, I look forward to coming into work and I'm just trying to do something new. I went in thinking, you know, I kinda wanna be a broker and then looking at how hard Jed works, it just kinda it's showing me that it's it's tough. It's it's really difficult to be a broker in real estate and then you just see all the contracts, all the all the things you have to put go through, all the minor details, putting a, a key in a box on the on the front door, you gotta go to the house, put up signs. So I think it was just so much more that goes into it than people realize, and more than what I realized. And then it came in and just, it just showed me that, you know, this is, this is really hard work, and it's kind of what I want to do. The success stories of Impacto have been um, so great. We actually have had students go through their internship experience, and it really solidifies that this is what they want to do. Then we also have experiences where students go through their internship, and they decide this is not exactly what I thought. And to me, that, that, that is a win for, for our students and for the parents who are fixing to invest the money into their um, education. You know, going into this, you know, I just, I just really just like looking at houses, but now, you know, finishing the internship, I've decided that, you know, I'm going to 
I'm going to get my real estate license. So I'm working on that right now, but I'm going to go to school for business so I can kind of learn the business side of things. Um, in our pilot year of the Impactive Internship Program, we started out with 13 interns. Um, that number grew a little bit because we actually had businesses uh, calling our school district wanting an intern. So we actually had to grow the number a little bit last year. This year, we're up to 41 internships, um, which we're really excited about. And the calls keep coming in from community partners wanting an intern to students and parents wanting this experience for their child. The program has really grown this year. We're really excited uh, to have more than doubled our spots in the internship program this year for New Albany High School. Um, we are hoping to even grow it even more. Um, our community partners have just been the best. Um, J. Morris Realty was a new one for us this year. Um, we've got BNA Bank who has partnered with us for our second year. Um, Toyota has been a wonderful partner um, in hosting inter interns this year. Um, also this year we've added Baptist Memorial Hospital, which we're very excited about. Um, some of our other medical interns are Creekmore Clinic, um, IMPC, um, Cook's Adult Day Care Center. Um, we, have, we have so many great partners in the community and we're just very thankful for their partnership with our school district. I'm Jed Morris. I'm Jamie Clayton, a realtor here at J. Morris Realty. We were glad to have Caleb here working with us uh, through the Impacto program from New Albany High School. If you are a local business here in the area, we would like to encourage you to also host an intern. Hey, thank you again for joining us this morning on WTVA. We hope, certainly hope that you've enjoyed all of the lessons that we have. We're so honored and blessed to have the talent of teachers that we have here and to be supported by such a great community around us. Join us every Tuesday and Thursday from 9.30 to 10. And to my students at New Albany High School, remember, if nobody's told you they love you today, you better know that I do. It's a great day to be a Bulldog. <laughs>